All right, now we're gonna cut our coil. The general consensus is that taking one full coil off the bottom will net you about two inches. Some people say two and a half, uh, but the, the majority of people say two inches. So, one full coil, starting from here, going around, and ending right here, that's where we need to make our cut. Now, it's highly recommended that you set the spring, meaning you heat it up and you kind of fold it so that you have this uh, little pigtail area right here uh, that's kind of flatter than uh, if, if you had not bent it. I'm not certain that I can do that. I don't have an oxyacetylene torch. All I have is a map gas torch. And I'm not certain that that's gonna be hot enough uh, for this spring. Um, most people do say that it's it's okay to heat the spring. Uh, whenever you apply heat to a spring, you no longer it is no longer spring steel. It is just plain mild steel. But we're going to do this roughly three to four inches back from where our cut is, and then bend this up so it's more flat across the bottom. Again, I'm going to try it. I'm not certain that I can do it, uh, but we'll give it a shot. But I am certainly going to cut the coil right there. So setting the spring is actually fairly important and I've got the little cut piece uh, off of the coil spring and I'm just going to put this right here in the little bucket that it sits in in the lower control arm. Now I've got contact, it's sitting flat in this bucket. Now this bucket kind of has a spiral shape to it as well, but it's got contact for about three quarters of this coil right there. So from there all the way around to about there. That's going to hold it in place. That's going to make sure that your, your spring doesn't pop out in one direction or the other. Now, it's, if you don't set it, it's not likely that the spring is going to come out of there because it's a pretty deep pocket, but this just helps uh, ensure that that doesn't do that. So, if I take the spring, which I've cut, and I set that in there, where it's supposed to go, I really am only going to have probably half. So from this point up here, which you really can't see, down to about here, that's about as much contact as this spring is gonna have in the pocket when the suspension is compressed, when there's a load on this spring. So not to mention that shortening this spring, that setting this spring accounts for some of your drop, for a portion of that two inch drop. If you shorten this distance between this coil and this coil, that's some of your drop right there. So. Uh, there's multiple reasons why you need to set the spring, heat it up, bend this down, shorten this distance here. You get the drop, plus it's safer when it's sitting in, the, in its bucket in the lower control arm. All right, here's the setup I have for uh, heating and setting the bottom of this coil spring. Now it's crude. I just got that map gas torch ratcheted there to the table. I got a little bit of, little bit of load here on the, uh, the C-clamp. So I'm just gonna turn this on and I'll set it. It's got a little set switch on there that'll keep it on. And so I'm just gonna let that cook and heat up and slowly apply tension. Now in the past when I've done this, I had access to uh, an oxy fuel torch. Uh, I don't now and I'm not sure that map gas is gonna be enough heat uh, to set this spring. Uh, but I'll set the camera up on the tripod and uh, we'll give this a whirl. So we got the spring pretty well set. 
And I'm just going to let this cool down naturally. I'm not going to hit it with water. It's just going to cool down in the air. Uh, hopefully I haven't done any damage to the rest of the spring. I don't think I have because I've heated a fairly small area, but I did heat it over a fairly uh, long period of time. Uh, but I'm, fairly, I'm confident that all the other coils uh, should still be spring steel. Uh, this is most likely not spring steel anymore where we heated it.